Oh my gosh. Okay, next question is from Haley Cates. Drew, which fountain pens are among the pantheon of legendary fountain pens? Legend, we're we talking like all pens through all history because i see you got some notes in here and i'm like these i don't even know some of these literally. i don't know most of these but haley didn't <laughs> specify so here's what i'm gonna do okay. for you haley um okay. this got me thinking with my brains mm. about the time brian and i walked all over to italy <laughs> and like visited this. yeah you know we, we we hopscotched over to torino italy where the aurora factory and offices are um, officina and uh, we checked out their museum which is amazing and one great thing about the aurora fountain pen museum is that they had a section where they celebrated a bunch of different fountain pens throughout history that were not necessarily aurora pens and i was like this is so super cool and i found out what their list was and now this mm. is a list that we cannot tell you why it was on here they have all the literature there I, you know i don't think they, they have, have it public. Reasons. you they have, have yes reasons. they have reasons but generally each pen uh had some feature that had not yet been seen before it, it pushed the envelope a little bit further within the fountain pen industry um so just real quick i'm gonna run down um the list here 1896 actually i'm not gonna do the years it ha i have the years but whatever waterman's 22 um, the Conklin Crescent Filler, that was 1898. And I do know that that was the first self-filling fountain pen. So that's mm -hmm. a big deal. So that was the first pen. I think that the Waterman's 22 must have had some sort of like, you know, you, an eyedropper or something like that. But uh, the Crescent Filler Probably. Probably. was yeah. like, you could it actually had the, the sack in it. So big, mm -hmm. huge deal. Um, and then you've got the Waterman's 12S, the Onoto de la Rue. The Parker Duo Fold, the Schaefer Balance, the Pelican Model 100, the Wall Ever Sharp Doric, the Parker Vacuumatic, the Mont Blanc 139, the Parker 51, which everybody knows, the Aurora 88, and the Aurora Hostile. So Aurora puts them in there toward toward the end, but um, yeah, that's, that, that was their list. And um, I thought that was really impressive and uh, mm -hmm. really cool that they're celebrating the writing history overall. Um, of these pens... Uh, Parker did have a newish 51. I can't speak to that one because we didn't, we don't carry Parker. Um, yeah, they, re they revamped it, what, a year or two ago? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it had mixed, mixed feelings about that. But I can say that we still do carry the Crescent Filler, the Conklin Crescent Filler, the Mark Twain Crescent Filler, the black one, the chased black. That is more or less the original one. Obviously, there have been some improvements made, but it's basically the same pen it looks pretty pretty similar i think it's a little thicker than the original i think the original was probably. a little more thin but as far as pens from this list that you can still get that's probably the one closest to the original um still being made by the same company so mm -hmm. neat um so that's historical stuff brian nor i profess to be experts in fountain pen history and uh, nah. we don't generally like to step out of bounds we like to focus on the f stuff that we've had personal hands-on experience with and um so i did um get a list of five pens together that i think are currently available pens that deserve a place in kind of like the mount rushmore or pantheon of legendary pens that are mm. currently legendary that i think have changed the landscape of the fountain pen industry in some way shape or form um and uh, i i chose one word to describe each of them just to kind of like categorize them myself so the lamy 2000 my pick i consider that immortal pen's been around forever it will probably continue to be around forever mm. the mont blanc 149 we don't sell this pen but i picked the word transcendent because even if you're not into pens this thing is is pervasive in a way that i don't think any other fountain pen is it's just it's out there outside of the fountain pen realm and you can't argue the fact that that is that's huge um the visconti homo sapien uncompromising the design of this pen had pushed the envelope very very far and visconti as, as a whole continues to do this with design and principles and things like that and uh, the homo sapiens has been a grail pen for a lot of people for a lot of years so i definitely think uh, that belongs on the list the twisby 580 groundbreaking the a lot of twisbys could be on this list you could put the eco on here too but i chose the 580 because that's been kind of their flagship pen for the longest period of time they had the 540 before that but the 580 has been so accessible for so long and has been such a great entry point 
for so many people to get into the fountain pen hobby, I think that the 580 is, I would definitely put that up on the uh, Mount Rushmore of um, legendary pens that you can currently get. And then finally, I put the Pilot Metropolitan on here. I wanted another one that, uh, I use the word prolific here, meaning it is just out there. It has proliferated, right? It is just gotten in so many people's hands and created a positive first time user experience in the fountain pen world. And of all the starter pens, you know, I, I almost went with the Safari on this one. Um, while the Safari is immensely popular and in so many hands overseas, I think mm. in the US, uh, the Metropolitan has been responsible for a lot of first time passages. And um, it comes with a converter. And I think that that just like adds mm. to a little bit higher first time accessibility than the Safari does. Um, but yeah, it's right there. I wanted something that kind of gets people in. So I kind of, I tried to have a good variety of types mm. of pens. Didn't want to repeat brands either, but you know, whatever. That's yeah, just my personal yeah. thoughts. So that's me. It's a pretty solid list, Drew, I would say. I, I similarly had a list kind of going on there and uh, I didn't originally have words for each of mine. But as you were talking, I took inspiration. I came up with my own words. All right. Which, as you know, last minute pressure is just where I become my most eloquent. There we go. So uh, my I tried hopes not are to high. I tried not to repeat your list, but I did for at least one of them. Um, Lamy 2000, I just I love that pen. You and have it's, to. It's so good. Um, so for that one, I put cool because I think that pen's really cool. So that's my that's my iconic word. There we go. Um, the next one, boy, you know, I love the Pilot Custom 74, but the Custom 823, oh, it's like hand in hand. So I'm, I'm gonna put the 823 because that's really risen a lot and the mechanism, the, the filling mechanism is cool. So uh, for that one, I put great. I think it's a great pen. Um, the Noodler's Nib Creeper, very controversial, but I think Noodler's has gotta be in here somewhere in terms of impact. I thought about this one. Like, I would not say this is gonna be the greatest writing experience out no. of anything on this list, but it for what it is, it's so influential and iconic and it changed so much of the game when it You're came out. You're absolutely right. It really was, it really did shake things up there. Yeah. Uh, around 2010, uh, it was, it really shook up the industries. I, I debated about putting that one in there. Yeah, so I put that was fun. That was my word. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I went with Twisby as well. I did the Eco. Eco 580, I think it's a toss up between yeah. the two. Um, very influential. Eco's definitely become an up and a comer in the last many years. Absolutely. Um, gonna, that one, my, my big $10 word there is neat. I think it's neat. And uh, the last one I had was the Pilot Falcon. I think that one has just been, it's been, you know, maybe not talked as much about, talked about as much in recent years, but really ever since we were aware of fountain pens, the Falcon stood alone. It was talked about. It still is a popular pen, great writing experience, such a good reputation. Um, so yeah, I would say that that one is nice, nice. So cool, great, fun, neat, and nice. Those are my Michael Scott level descriptors for, <laughs> for my pens. But seriously, this is not a super serious list. There's so much more thought that could be put into this. Yeah. And uh, if you ask me again in 12 minutes, I'll probably give you five different pens. But anyway. yeah, I was actually very impressed with your your self-control here. And like there are so many more people that have greater historical knowledge than Brian or oh, I that, yeah. that that could put together like a perfect list that takes into account hundreds of years, no, 100 years of fountain pen history but uh absolutely this is by i thought no i thought it might be, meant to be yeah historical. i thought it might be cool yeah. to kind of focus on like what what you could go out and get you know sure, sure. um yeah so Makes yeah sense. there we go cool. that was a fun uh, fun question Haley. thank you <laughs>